I'm much more of a visual person than I am a hearing person. And uh, I started out after school as a building contractor and building homes and so forth. And architecture, I think, is art. Um, there are a lot of things that are art. In fact, I've had a big question that I've asked the people of San Francisco MoMA is please describe what art is. I think it's very difficult. There's all kinds of things. Anything that, that's done creatively by people that is visual, I think, is art. Maybe there's more than just that. It's, uh, if you invent things, it's, it's art. But I've been a visual person, and uh, I naturally got into art, and then got into the clothing business, which is also visual, which I, I look at as an artist's creativity in creating some of our clothes, or maybe all of our clothes. The point that I got involved in art was when I can afford to buy it. And I couldn't afford to buy anything before that. Well, the art basically started in the early 70s, and I started The Gap in 1969. When we started collecting uh, with Doris's really good friend, Peggy Walker, she was sort of a, an art advisor. And because she was Doris's best friend, She'd help us pick things out and, and figure some artists that we thought we should get involved with. And that's how we started. We started collecting prints, which is really the best way to start collecting, because you really get good artists and good visual pieces at very low prices compared to buying the real art. As our uh, financial assets grew, we started buying more. And that's, you know, as I look back right now, I should have bought more. But uh, I think we bought pretty wisely and we bought in depth. And the artists that we liked, we really didn't buy artists we didn't like. And it was easy to like certain artists. And the ones that we have liked, we've, we've bought over the years in, in real depth. But when once we started buying it, it, you know, people get infected by, by the idea of the game and, and purchasing and looking around. And we got to know, know dealers and whenever we went to New York, We'd spend time going to the dealers, we go to the museums. Over time, you start understanding what an artist is all about. You go to enough retrospectives of San Francis or Liechtenstein, you know what you like, you know the things that you think are the best. I don't think you could put the collection together that we have today um, because, number one, the art isn't available. It's not as much just being able to pay for it, which in itself is staggering today, what's happened to the art prices. But the art itself, the really good art, is not available. It's either in museums' hands or in private collectors that aren't selling it. John Caldwell got us interested in a number of the artists that we've been collecting. A Sigmar Polka, Richter, uh, those are the two that really come to mind. And we have a, an enormous Richter collection. And we have several Polkas, but not to the same extent. The Bay Area is probably as good as any other area in the United States as far as collectors are concerned. I do believe that museums have to have broader thinking than they do today uh, to be relevant. Well, I think an ideal museum would be a museum with a good permanent collection and with the ability and um, open-mindedness to have shows that are uh, of real interest to a, a bigger constituency. To some extent, I think museums are elitist, and I don't think they should be. I think, because again, what's art? And who's, you know, are we the people that should define what art is to the population, or people's own mind of what art is? Uh, they should have the right to make their own decisions.